Welcome to the stamp program. A series for collectors, by collectors, about collecting. Program 1, The Romance of Collecting. Introduced by Cat This is where I live. It is undoubtedly a very strange house. The relevant point is that this eccentric collection could not have existed if, at the age of about eight years, in a very isolated house in Pembrokeshire, in uh, southwest Wales, I hadn't seen this little Swiss postage stamp. I believe that it was my beloved grandfather who gave me. It uh, depicts William Tell. And as far as I know, this postage stamp was the first authentic piece of any foreign country that I had ever seen. And my imagination was fired. And uh, as you can see, it has never been quenched. I submit that a postage stamp is a curious summation of the character of any country at any specific time. Incidentally, this country, Britain, produced the very first postage stamp in the year 1840, the famed Penny Black. Finely engraved and displaying the profile. So you see what I mean? This precious bit of paper is an exemplary reflection of that early Victorian virtue. Conservative, I hope. Of course, times change. This is a contemporary British product. And not Here are some of the foreign stamps, as they were collectively known, that I knew when I was a young person. The garish colors of certain Latin American countries, uh, perhaps depicting their current dictator. Fine engravings on French pictorials. This is Victor Hugo. And the spectacular. French colonial issues from Asia and Africa. Let us pause here and take a look at an old collection of the kind which might have been put together by Kenneth's grandfather. Seeing it for the first time, there is always that thing of excitement, the chance, just a chance, that you may discover some fine, valuable rarity. That is always a part of the collection. Let us take a look. Great Britain. Oh dear, it's a bit sparse, but there's a pen black and a tuppenny blue. At first sight, it might appear to have bad stamps here, but unfortunately, as so often happens in these early collections, they have been stuck down to the album page. There is no way to tell immediately just how the stamps have been stuck down. It could have been by glue, but the task of removing a stamp from the page is a tricky operation. You could try cutting them off with damp blotting paper. Or there are several proprietary products which you could get from your local stamp shop. But success cannot be guaranteed. In any case, the value of these stamps is greatly reduced. You will probably come across stamps of the old German states in collections of this kind. Baden and Bavaria, Lübeck, Oldenburg, Prussia and Saxony, to name but a few. These are from Brunswick. Their stamps often have a high catalogue value, but beware of the many reprinted forgeries which these old albums. There's a page of the old Kingdom of Hanover, being some obvious reprints, sadly in the usual rather poor condition. Cotch 
Britain. It's good, clear margins, attractive and genuine benchmark, and a requirement which we cannot examine in a stuck-down stamp, the certainty that it is not torn in the back. Condition is all important. The Canadian states of British Columbia and Vancouver Island, together with New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island, all had their own early stamps. This page shows the issues of New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Not perhaps the tidiest or most attractive example, but they really are in old general collections of this kind. This is an attractive stamp of Nova Scotia, that once again is stuck down, and the left-hand margin has been cut into, so the value is diminished. This looks more interesting, a page of early imperfect stamps of Ceylon. Some of these are very highly catalogued. The orphanage stamp will be valued at some thousands of pounds, in good condition. But, you can see, it is rather the margins have been cut pretty close. The specimen on the left has been cut to shape, a frequent habit with early collectors, and regrettably, this destroys the present day value of the stamp. Nevertheless, there are some good stamps here. You can be lucky. Here are a few early stamps of Colourful or exciting items, perhaps. But the stamp at the bottom is called the Bullseye. It was one of the first stamps to be issued after the Penny Black. And lastly, a page of the famous triangular stamp of the Cape of Good Hope. High catalogue stamps again, but in very nice condition. All in all, an interesting old collection. Many of the best stamps are imperfect, but here and there are real prides. Moving on, this popular old album was published for general collectors just after the turn of the century. This example is a first edition, dated 1906. Spaces for the stamp are arranged on both sides of the pages, which are sometimes protected by transparent interleaves. This display early issues of Belgium and France. This value of stamp is the one franc value of 1853, showing the head of the Emperor Napoleon III. And Germany, with the then colony of New Guinea on the left. This type of item is still popular with some older collectors today. With the publishing of the Imperial Album in the 1920s, providing comprehensive spaces for watermarks, shades and varieties, the interest in stamp collecting increased greatly. We are seeing here a few pages from a two-volume collection of Commonwealth and Colonial Territories to give some idea of the scope and interest in a fine general collection. This page, for instance, displays the early Britannia issues of Barbados. These are some of the later issues. These attractive stamps are from the Solomon Islands. And Brunei, the overprint reads, Malay Borneo Exhibition, 1922. The first issue of the Falkland Islands, including two bisect stamps. This fine engraving is of King George V. And the first quail stamp from the set of the this page shows the early embossed stamps of Gambia. This rarity, issued in 1854 by the Commissioner for the Indian District of Sindh, is known as the Sindh Dork. It is the first stamp of India, and it is very rare. These are the two early Sixana stamps of India. A page of stamps from the Indian state of Hyderabad and from Punch. A page of valuable earth stamps of New Brunswick. This Atlantic schooner is from Newfoundland. And a page of other fine issues from the same country. This stamp shows a Vickers V biplane carrying the first transatlantic airmail passing over mail package ship. This pair, known as the Smiling Boy, are the first charity health stamps from New Zealand. These splendid engravings of birds and animals are from North Borneo. 
and this native craft is from Papua. The pine fir is from Western Australia. An attract page later swan issues. And lastly, a handsome display of Zanzibar. Of course, nowadays, collecting things of the world is enormous. Collectors prefer to concentrate on just one country. Printed albums of one country collecting are readily available. This one is for the stamps of Luxembourg. These attractive pictorials are from 1935. The spaces for the stamps are, generally speaking, actively laid out. The top row on this page are charity stamps of 1945 in aid of the War Victims Fund. The left set commemorates the centenary of the death of John Blind, King of Bohemia. And this fine stamp was issued in aid of the Echternach Abbey Restoration Fund in 1947. In this type of album, there are usually pages for official steps, vestige dues, parcel and railway steps, and other special issues. and write up his collection on blank pages. Such a collection might include an old engraving the country studied. In this longer, one of the friendly islands in the Pacific. This is the issue of King George I of Tonga and the art of his portrait which the printing eye was taken. A rare envelope, or cover in Philippine language, being a bisected stamp. The item at the top of the page is called a piece, that is, a piece cut out from the cover showing the stamps and postmark. A registered letter addressed to London via San Francisco with the registration number, which is important, on the left. Longer Belgium, but returned to the sender. An postcard dated October the 24th, 1906. A censored letter of 1942 on active service addressed to New Zealand. Fine tin can mail cover. Now these letters, sealed in containers, were dropped overboard from ships past the outlying islands of the group and carried ashore by the tide. This was because the ships were too shallow for break the mail ships to reach the jetty. And a beautifully illustrated, stamped printed postcard. Specimen. So, after going the specialized collection of the history, let us ask Smith about his particular interest. You can collect any aspect of postal usage the postal history for Islington, for example, since that is where I happen to be sitting now. I have ended up by collecting the postal history of a war. The British Boer War of 1899 to 1902. I study the story of how the British soldiers sent their letters from the battlefields of South Africa, usually to their homes in Britain. This is from a British prisoner held by the Boers in Pretoria, or from someone in the Orange Free State writing to a Boer prisoner being held by the British just outside of Cape Town. From a British soldier inside the town of Ladysmith while it was being besieged by a Boer army. Ladysmith Siege Post Office. February the 17th, 1900. That is what the paper reads. And here is an envelope from a Boer soldier who was besieging Smith. This unusual postmark reads, Kutlager Ladysmith, Headquarters Ladysmith. This envelope was besieging this envelope. Do you recognize the exciting idea? You can demonstrate the whole story of the war. Or anything else. The story of air mail flights. Aerophilately is a popular and fascinating story on its own. This 
Day of early German airmail covers was exhibited in London at the Autumn Stamp Expo. Exhibition items brought together here from all over the world. Here is the organizer, Mr. Ronald Shelley. Welcome to Stampex, Britain's national stamp exhibition. We hold it twice a year, February and October. Please come in and look around. Thank you, we will. Sorry. The security guard has to keep a line. The stamps on display here are probably worth millions of pounds. This spectacular block of 12... Just imagine the in the auction room. But of course, stamp auctions are not only for the very rich. Regular sales are held in many parts of the country. Accessories. What do we need for stamp collecting? A catalogue. This enables us to identify our stamps and arrange them sensibly. The standard Commonwealth catalogue gives much more detail. Perforation, watermarks, postmarks and the dates of issue, along with much more useful information. Stamp hinges, tweezers, a magnifying glass, perforation gauge and, of course, an album. And after that brief lecture tour, let us take a look at where the action is. If only the grown-ups looked as cheerful as these youngsters. But this teacher obviously has got the bug. So how did you begin? Because you're quite a famous stamp collector, aren't you? Yeah, well, I started off when my dad put me a hat thing to this for yeah. Christmas. And that just started me off. And you've won some award, or you're in the exhibition? Last year, last year I did an exhibition on who's who, the famous people, and I won a bronze. And this year I did one on um, stamp collecting, where you um, start and that, and I won a silver medal. Fantastic. So Daddy did, uh, wasn't a stamp collector first. You started him off, did you? Yeah. And your sister, she collects stamps too? Yeah, she does. She collects them all yeah. So is that a good idea to specialise in something like birds and animals or the royal family? Well, you can do that, or you can just just collect something like um, Great Britain or world stamps or you know any stamps. Many schools in all parts of the country have thriving stamp clubs. Or if you can't find one, why not start one of your own? This looks like serious business, and no doubt it is. And so is. This. No smoking in the stamp shop, please. Just a moment to face his study. As a stamp collector, a schoolboy shares his interest with the kid. There are no boundaries of class, colour, race or creed. It is truly international. For many of us, it soon opens up far wider horizons, cultural, artistic, historical. Business here looks good. But of course, you don't have to go to London or to any other big city to find a helpful at your local shop. Hello, Michael. Hello. You were very busy again today. Hardly always busy, always busy. People collecting penny wax, um, collecting of stamps, uh, stamp, good stamps, uh, it's like rummaging. And all around the rooms and all around the doors. Absolutely. Um, I find it's the best way because I go from a few pounds to pounds. And you let people rummage about, do whatever oh, yes. they like. Oh yes, stamp collectors are very clean, tidy people. Is this so? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are they looking for when they rummage about? Like? Bargains primarily. Mm -hmm. um, usually pretty stamps, thematic stamps, such yes. as animals, birds, flowers. Um, really, I suppose, a multitude of things. And do you help them? Do you guide them as to which pile of nature uh, is I do, but then you do find the other extreme of specialists who guide me. Yes. You see, um, it's very difficult to say. I suppose there are, there are collectors for every type of stamp, whether it be thematics, whether it be penny blacks, uh, whether it be envelopes, in other words, covers, postal history. Uh, goes on forever. And you have penny blacks for sale here? Oh yes, They're, in fact um, we have one or two on display down here with the young man looking through his very expensive microscope. Oh, I must have a look at that. Certainly. That looks fascinating. What is it? 
trying to plate the penny blacks. That's my uh, speciality. I find it fascinating. Just plate them all. Different hobby. What does that mean? Well, there was eleven different plates of the penny blacks, mm -hmm. and uh, they've all got slightly different. As this dealer has just said, thematic collecting is now very popular. Or birds, the choice of England. Some collectors prefer to concentrate on one special territory. To illustrate the wealth of interest that can be found in collecting the stamps of just one area, we have chosen the Caribbean. The West Indies, so called because they left all of the early European westwards to find a shorter trade route to the wealth of India, spice islands of the Orient. That great arc of islands running some 2,000 miles from Grand Bahama in the latitude of Florida, including the island of San Salvador with the monument of the first landing of the Lungs, and the Cayman Islands, still administered by the British. Jamaica with the old British naval base at Port Royal. the United States, the Libyans, Tigre, Barbuda, St. Christopher and Nice, Dominica, the French island of Guadeloupe, and Martinique, the Windows, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, the Lesser Antilles, including the old Dutch colonies of Curaçao, Aruba and Bonaire, right down to Trinidad and Tobago. Drake and Hawk, Nelson, the pirate Blackbeard, whose real name was Thomas Teach, the Spanish treasure galleons, many of whom were wrecked or captured, these dangerous coral caves and islets, the sad history of the slave trade, the British, the French, the Spaniards, the Dutch and the Danes, all have left their footprints and sometimes their graves. Here among the palm wind silver sands and the deep blue sea of the Caribbean. And much, much more we find in their service. Let us take a look. Surprisingly, the first stamps used in the old British East Indies were these Victorian stamps of Great Britain, the Penny Red. Fourpenny Red. The sixpenny lilac and the one shilling green. Here are some examples. The characters AO3 in the barred oak postmark used in British Guiana. E12 signifies the island of St. Christopher. And this showing the AO1 postmark in Kentucky. You can identify all these from the state Gibbons Commonwealth Catalogue. Speaking of Jamaica, this attractive pictorial set was issued in 1919. The one penny value is of because it depicts an Arawak Indian lady. The Arawak Indians were the first known inhabitants of this island. This is an example of steps being used to raise funds for a charity. An extra halfpenny was charged on each value and donated to the Jamaican welfare fund. There are many other examples of charity stamps from throughout the world. This attractive miniature sheet is four of the early packet ships which carried the Jamaican mail in the 19th century. They are Mary, Queensbury, the Sheldrake and the Thames, with the dates during which they operated. And this striking stamp commemorates the Morant Bay Rebellion of 1865. Paul Bogle showed on the left Left revolt, which resulted in the burning down of the courthouse at Martin Bay. The other portrait is of the Reverend William Gordon, a Jamaican Baptist minister who was held to be the real power behind the revolt. Both men were caught and hung by the British. However, this reflection led to the recall of the governor John Eyre and eventual disgrace in England. 
an example of history in stamps. In this first general program, we have time only to take a glimpse into the Aladdin's cave of philatelic treasures, both classical and modern, to be found among the stamps of the Caribbean. This fine engraving, for example, of Queen Victoria is from St. Christopher. A paper from the Barbados. This stamp from St. Kitts and Nevis shows Christopher Columbus spying out the land. Can you spot the obvious error? Columbus died in 1506, whereas the telescope was only invented in the time of the day, around 1608, a hundred years after Columbus. was repeated in the Early postal history is commemorated in many recent issues of the Caribbean countries. This nice sheet celebrates the 100th anniversary of the first Montserrat stamp, a stamp in Antigua printed, as you can see. Here is the A08 obliterator used on British stamp between 1858 and 1860, and on the right, a circle hand stamp, which was used. Here's another example showing the first stamps from the Dominican Republic. The modern stamps of the area are often colorful and exotic. These fish from the warm seas around St. Lucia. Or birds, such as this lovely set from the Bahamas. The roseate spoonbill. The white crowned pigeon white-tailed tropic birds and the Cuban Amazon. These small reptiles from St. Lucia are listed as endangered species. Lepidotries is the pineapple cultivation in the Bahamas or the coffee industry in the city. At the spot in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Island scenery rocks are off Martin or the beautiful people this is a girl from Guadeloupe and if you are just thinking of taking a holiday in the sun what about these tourist hotels in Nevis lastly we are privileged to show you two of the great rarities of the West Indies this Jamaican one pound stamp of Queen Elizabeth II was prepared for you in 1956 for various reasons was rejected and the stock destroyed. However, five copies remain. Four of the Royal Collection, and this one is shown by kind permission of the curator of the Philatelic Collection at the British Library in London. This first Trinidadian stamp is the interesting rarity known as the Lady MacLeod. It was issued by David Bright, the owner of the trading ship of that name. They have a face value of five cents each for the carriage of letters by his ship from Port of Spain, capital of the island, to San Fernando, some 50 miles further down the coast. Most examples are pen cancelled or have the corners cut off. On cover, they are exceedingly valuable. If only Democrats could have foreseen the need nowadays. We will penetrate if we have the last word. We plan to show you every aspect of this universal enthusiasm. For instance, any more uh, um, nutcases like me, who derive such innocent pleasure and serious historical research from their activities. And it is a brotherhood and sisterhood of the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. And there are many millions of us. We plan to show you the stamp trade, the dealers, who can be even more eccentric than us collectors. And we plan to show you the vast international stamp and postal history exhibitions that methodically march around this world. New York, uh, Johannesburg, Delhi, Toronto, etc., etc. And we plan to show you what the millionaires have done. 
including the royal collection. Well, it is true to say that I would not be living in this house or have written a few books or made rather a large number of documentary films if my grandfather had not drawn my attention to this little Swiss postage stamp.